After the destruction of Point Nemo, the Nether Highway Group was forced to move to a new location if they wanted to continue their base at the world border. Very quickly, a new location was founded in a massive savanna biome, a base that was soon called Point Dory. For almost two months, this base has secretly been under construction and was kept under wraps until now. After hours and hours of work, I am very proud to show you the Nether Highway Group's base, Point Dory. I've been waiting so long to show this place off, to talk about its history, to talk about its builds, to even just show it on video. I think the best place to start would be showing off all of its members. This right here is the list of people who are in the Nether Highway group, who have either contributed to the builds, or contributed to the highway, or have been a part of the group. It's been an absolute honor getting to know every one of them. I never expected to be in a group like this on 2B2T. Honestly, they are all amazing people. I'm so glad I've been able to just be a part of this base with them. Be able to build with them every single day. I say we get started. This here is the main path of Dory. Here we had a little bit of a dupe stash. Unfortunately, we had to move it. But when the Donkey Duke 2.0 came around, we duped all the items we needed to construct this base. This here is my build. I am very proud of this build. I got a lot of help from my fellow members. But I am very proud how this turned out. I call this the Hall of Heroes. It is a long haul containing the heads of every single person that either built in the group or mined the highway. This is my way of giving back. They've all given me so much over the past few months, and I wanted some way to say thank you. At every little head, we've got a player's own personal items. This is Burnsy's, for example. We've got his map art, a few of his items, his books. Over here, we have CB the Beast, and here's mine. Got my map art and the list of number of blocks I've dug. And at this point in the center, I like to call this the center of Point Dory. From here you can go in any direction. It'll take you to all the builds around here at Point Dory. You also get an amazing view and you can appreciate everyone who took part in this entire build. This wall will forever represent the contributions and personalities of everyone at Dory. So maybe someday in the far future when someone finally comes across this base, they can admire every one of the Nether Highway Group's members. I'm glad we all have our own place here. As the sun rises, I can finally begin the full tour of Dory at this amazing build. A builder by the name of Scribble Fox has made a massive castle here at Dory, and what you see in front of you is its main entrance. It is one of the best builds I've ever seen. It is detailed and crafted to perfection. And when it began construction, we all thought it was a little bit ambitious. But it has turned out to really bring Dory together. It has really defined what this build is like, and it is in the center of every single screenshot that I've ever shared of this base. And it doesn't just end here, because this is cool and all. But if we run all the way around here, it keeps going all the way around Point Dory. It's crazy to think how many hours he's spent on this build. And he doesn't even brag about it or anything. And this is one of its greatest entrances. Unbelievably symmetrical, unbelievably perfectly crafted. Let's just head on in there and check it out. This is just fantastic. Unfortunately, it couldn't be finished to its fullest extent due to time constraints. But you can already see that Scribble Fox is an amazing builder. This is a Drud 14 level build, honestly. And Drud 14 is on a very high level that I don't think many players will ever have the ability to reach. Not, and on top of that, you get an amazing view of Point Dory from every single angle. He's made catwalks and walkways across all over Point Dory. And they all give you amazing views. 
and you can keep heading up these staircases to get even higher to see even more and eventually you get to the point where you can head all the way up on top of Point Dory's Mountain and here's the main level of Point Dory's Mountain I absolutely love looking around here you can see a lot of the builds that people have made along with that you get an amazing walkway where you can walk down and head to the other side of Point Dory I'll get down there in a few moments in here you've got an amazing sort of throne area that Scribble Fox has constructed. Looks like a storage room, honestly. And just look at this. Wow. I'm telling you, Scribble Fox, he is one of the best builders in this group, if not the best. This is fantastic. He's honestly put the most amount of work into this base and most amount of thought. It's amazing. Here you've got another room that he's constructed. And if we go up this staircase, we've got some of the other builds people have made. The staircase was constructed by a wonderful player named Willy Roof. At Dory's Origins, it was kind of hard to get up and down. And so obviously we needed a staircase built pretty quickly. He's IRQL's little house going on with the modern theme. I've always loved the modern theme. It's right up there with the medieval-esque builds. And it's just an it, it it fits so perfectly on top of this mountain on this nice little base but you can keep heading upwards it's like this base goes forever here we have a castle made by a player named admirac this place is also an amazing place for views we can head all the way up the tower all the way up to this little cone area and just look down to the bottom and wow that is a deep fall it was honestly kind of scary building up here. You always had the threat of falling. Let's head this way to a build made by Star928. Over in the distance, we can see another build that was in construction. Fortunately, it was never completed. Again, due to time constraints. Here's another neat little build where Star has set himself up. What I thought was really cool about this build is right here, you can turn off every single one of the lights. You can see all the lights have gone off. It was just the small detail. And I, and by the way, I didn't mention it. But let me just go off the side and show you guys this. Look at that. It's like an airship. It's so awesome. And that one over there, I'm assuming, would be the same. But this is just so cool. Very creative. That was kind of the goal for this base. It was to be a build what you want wherever you want kind of base and originally it was kind of worrying we didn't know if we'd have any sort of organization but it sort of sorted itself out and it turned out to be something that was such an amazing idea here's a build made by nazis it's a little bit of a club again just a nice little build on top of this little base now let's turn back around i've got another build i want to show off it was another build willy roof made another really awesome build it was one of the first ones that popped up as well And honestly, it was selected one of the best locations. At this time, when you were up here, all you could see from looking down was this huge drop. And many times did I fall down it. But again, this is just a nice little home. Very comfy. Once again, another build incomplete. But it's still amazing. And if we head all the way up here, all the way up here, we reach the very peak of Dory's Mountain, where you can look down. Well, and kind of pee your pants over the massive drop. But this is one of the very first things that were set up here, right on the peak. People who claim these places on the mountain got very prime real estate, honestly. Although, prime is an obligatory term if you look down like this. I don't know if I would want to be up here and fall down. Look at this. It's just so awesome when I think about all the variety of builds. Like, this one has no real purpose, but it's just awesome. And not only that, there are other builds that are just like this. You've got an amazing butterfly over there. I'm not sure who constructed that. I wasn't up with that one, but it's so amazing. And when you go around in free cam and look at it all, it just, it just takes your breath away. Just builds like that. Now there's a reason I came up here, and it wasn't just to see the peak. 
If we head this way, there is a project that I was very personally amazed at. You know, it always, it always amazes me when I think about the time and effort it takes to make a build. And if there's one build that truly defines time and effort around here, it is, it is Ion's Taurus. It was a build that was in construction over at Nemo, but that was before it got griefed. And as you see, it is a massive circular torus. If you've never seen a torus before, I'll pop up an image right now. But it's a massive torus that goes all the way around forever, it seems. And as you see, it was still incomplete, but it was almost there. It's going to have a glass dome, and I could only assume trees and paths down here. And if you look around, just look at that. It just takes my breath away every time I see it. Because it goes all the way around. Seriously, all the way around. And it creates this massive shadow as well. It is like nothing I've ever seen before. And that was the whole point of it. You've seen pyramids, you've seen spheres, cubes. But tell me, when have you seen a torus? Again, with the views, you can look down from over here and you can just see everything. There are only a few bases on 2B2T where you can just stand anywhere and just look and enjoy it. I absolutely love it. Well, we gotta get down some way. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> Alright, I'm not dead. Not dead. Not dead yet. And this is how the place looks at night. Even in the night, it looks amazing. The lighting is just... It, it brings the whole place together, seriously really draws your eyes to what's to look at. Now here's another entrance into Point Dory's mountain. We've got a, these wonderful water lines going down into sewers actually. There's a whole sewer system underneath here by the way that Scribble built. And that's that that's that's where it is if you're curious. But we can head up this way and this was this is the first way up Dory. If you needed a way up, you ran up here and it was very convenient. And see you're back at the mountain. I forgot one build that I wanted to show off right down here. Is a build made by good friend, Jolk. You know, I didn't know him very well when we were digging the X Plus Highway. But when I started talking to him at Dory, we became really good friends. I talked to him on the basis now, but I wanted to show off his build. This is one of his first custom trees he's ever made, and I think it turned out really well. It's a great addition to the entire mountain. Now my next stop... Well... It's this over here. You gotta have some way to get down the back of Dory. And luckily, Burnsy created just the way. If I drop on down like this, you get a little bit of a slime block elevator that gets you over to this doorway. Now this passageway leads you to a wonderful little seating area with a little bit of a lake created by Terminator. But here's the thing, if you head down here, go all the way over here down this nice little pathway. Find this massive sugarcane farm created by Burnsy. Over here, we've got another little bit of a tunnel that goes all the way up. If you want to go up Dory, you can just take this nice little staircase. Here's a little back door to the sugarcane factory. And we head back down this pathway, and now we're at the back of Dory. As you see, here's the other side to the Hall of Heroes. I just want to show this off again. Admire the players. Now if we head over here, you'll see the build rendering in already. You'll find two massive pyramids. And I mean massive. Pyramids created by a player named Rasky. Remember that thing I said earlier about dedication and effort? Well, it was kind of funny because I thought one pyramid was honestly good enough. But you keep going and there's another fucking pyramid made out of obsidian. You know, because apparently the first pyramid wasn't good enough. Honestly, I have to say, these pyramids are awesome. You know, it's that, it's that thing about time and effort, you know. That's what I adore about Scribble's build. That's what I adore about Ion's, Taurus, and about these pyramids. They take time and effort to create. This one necessarily isn't the most creative build like Scribble's build, but it takes a lot of time and effort, and it's very monotonous to place the same block over and over and over again for hours. Nearly driving you insane. And in the end, I think it was worth it. They tower all the way up. In the end, I love looking at it. 
it in contrast with the rest of the build just makes this place seem more massive. I mean, just look at Dory right now. Every single one of the builds created by a different person with a different personality. That was the goal of this base. A butterfly, sugarcane, hall of heroes, even a statue dedicated to the Nether Highway group. Now, if you thought that was all that Dory had to offer, you are way wrong. This tour has nearly just begun. Because if we head out this side of Dory, we've still got tons and tons of builds to show off. I'm going to start with this one right here, created by a player named Ahsoka. This is a railway down to his build. This is a build that I contributed to. And I have to give my thanks to Ahsoka. Honestly. When I ran out of priority queue and couldn't pay for it, he had my back. And I have a lot of respect for him for that. So I did my best to try and help him out with this place. I wish I could have done more, but I was busy during the time. And if we head down here, we've got the Black Wing Cafe. Again, this build was pretty much incomplete due to time constraints. But you've got it right here. What's... What is here? This is sort of a community build. If you wanted to make something, you can drop on by here and create something of your own. Add, contribute, and it's just a nice little cafe. Authorized personnel only allowed upstairs. I'd be considered authorized, right? <laughs> wow. To think it's all made of obsidian too. I don't know. Before I came to Dory, I wasn't much of a obsidian builder. I was always too scared to build with it. It's crazy now to see builds like this show up that are made entirely out of obsidian. It's amazing. Up here are just a few more levels. There isn't much other built than this. But I'll head up there anyways to sort of show it off and give admiration to it. We've got another level. Had no real design planned in this room. Was meant for members of Dory to add their own rooms. Well, you know, maybe before I leave I might add my own little place. You know, I, I don't want to leave this place so soon. If we go back up here, we're right back into the main pathway of Dory. I want to head towards this side of the base. There's so much more to see. It's honestly insane how much is here. Let's stop here real fast. Here was a huge map of Dory. Unfortunately, we got a little bit of a... We had a little griefer who stopped by and did some damage and all the maps were destroyed. But it was a massive, and I mean absolutely massive map of Dory. It went all the way from one side to the other. Before I head to that side of Dory, I want to give a few more builds, just some screen time. Here's a neat little house that popped up. I forget who built it, I think it was Matt VTD. Here's a little bit of a cavern I made. If we head out here, we, have a we had a little bit of an issue between the Hall of Heroes and Scribble Fox's build. So I had to somehow compromise. I think this was a really good compromise, honestly. You've got a little bit of a backside of Scribble Fox's massive castle. Point Dory Department of Sanitation Boiler Room. We had all the way down here. If I'm correct, it leads to the sewers. Ah, oh, yes, the sewers. <laughs> I have to say, the fact that Scribble made even sewers a detail that small is just amazing. This guy, this guy is truly a wonderful builder. It doesn't go anywhere necessarily. It just leads sort of under his build. So not much. In here we can just pop right back on out. If you go up like this, you can see we are on the outside of a fountain. The Fountain of Elegance. Even just the small details, because you gotta think about it. Someone walked up here and just built a fountain. The small details really makes this place come alive. Up here we've got a few more builds. Here's a house made by Matt. I love the tiny little houses around here. It makes this place feel so connected. Got an attic area, a second floor, Dory brand maps. Oh wow, and I can't wait to get over there. Holy shit. And if we look out the window, we've got an amazing view of Toy Soldiers build. We'll get to there in a second. That is an amazing build over there. Here's a map of Matt's house. Up here we've got another floor. Seems more like the attic. This is where he slept. Get another great view of Dory. 
The sun is setting, so I'm going to have to get a move on. Over here, we've got a little bit of a lookout tower. It's not much in and of itself, but it's builds like these that make the place seem so, so alive. It brings it all together. When you look at it from a distance and see these houses everywhere, like Matt's house and Toy Soldier's builds and especially Scribble Fox's builds, you just start to think that this place doesn't just look like a block game. It starts to look like a whole city, a town, a village, somebody's creative artwork, 30 people's creative artwork. It makes me feel honored to even just be a part of this place. There aren't many bases that pop up like this anywhere, especially in survival. This is something you'd think you'd see on like Hermitcraft or something like that. But no, here it is. On a server filled with destruction and hatred. I've been able to find something else that wasn't just that. A group that was ambitious. A group that was motivated, skilled. A group that wanted to come together and make something amazing. And amazing they did. We are about to enter Toy Soldiers Borderland. One of the most beautiful areas of Point Dory. We've even got signs to explain everything. Mount Dory, Borderland. The gate originally dug by Rasky, later decorated by Toy Soldier. The gate goes down all the way to Bedrock. Fun fact, all the leaves are made out of alpha leaves. <laughs> That's right. When the Donkey Dupe 2.0 came around, we actually didn't dupe regular leaves. Well, not many of them at least. So we were forced to use the double chest worth of alpha leaves we had. Point Dory official museum path. We'll head up there in a moment. Here we've got an amazing little town, all built by Toy Soldier. Originally, this entire place was a small little farm. I don't think he was satisfied by that, so he took it all down and made this amazing build. And I have to... I. I love how it just goes across in many different directions. It isn't just the straightforward pass to a few houses. It goes above you as well, and you even got this little airship here. Borderland City Center. Let's head up one of these and check out what's going on. Here we are. This alone, in and of itself, is a build. Honestly, Toy Soldier has an eye out for building and an eye for foliage. This place is honestly enchanting. He's got custom trees, houses, even the houses are detailed. With stone brick, cracked stone brick, and mossy brick. And they're so abstract too. It isn't just the straightforward house. You can see this, this house for example right here starts out skinny. It's much bigger and it goes out like this. I honestly wish they could build like that. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it. It's crazy. And another example of how all of this was connected. This lake right here was man-made. It goes all the way to the originally generated lakes. And it even connects up. Even connects up with Scribble Fox's sewage system. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know how these people do it, but they're just... They work so well. If you have one person's build obstruct another person's build, they find a way to creatively merge them instead of just destroying one or the other. So enough with that. I want to head to Eisberg's museum this is a museum that is very well designed this is a build that popped up very late in dory's development and i have to say it is very well constructed and i think if i ever make a museum one day i'll make it very similar to this iceberg 86's museum unfortunately there weren't many donations for this place so it didn't get completely loaded with items but you can see there are a few things here. Here we've got like map art. Unfortunately, my shaders aren't giving it, you know, much slack, but... Alright, there we go. As you see, we've got a map art made by 24 Terminator 80. A map art made by Burnsy. A map art created by yours truly. Another map art by Terminator. And another map art by me. I hope that maybe one day, Iceberg will make another museum. And he'll have a lot more additions than this, because this was an amazing idea and it was so well done. Up. And right here is the main Dory banner, the X plus highway banner. Our symbol, our symbol as a group, the nether highway group symbol. Got a few more donations over here, alpha slabs, alpha leaves, the types of enchanted glass. Over here we've got some heads that we've managed to pick up. A lot of them actually. 
it's kind of surprising how the items have circulated over here. A lot of us who joined Point Dory originally, while well, joined the Nether Highway group, didn't have much. Heck, I joined with Unenchanted Diamond Gear. And now we've all got stacked armor, we've all got these rare items, and we've all got everything that we ever need. Building materials, tools. I'm telling you, everybody has contributed in their own ways. And I, I personally very much appreciate everything they've done for me and for everyone else. I want to take one last look at this nice little, nice view. Just everything. Before I head on to another part of the base. The lake, the bridge, it's all so well constructed. This base is like no other I've ever seen. With 30 people, it's one of the biggest bases on 2B2T. And honestly, it reaches that level with its size and complexity. I think it's definitely up there. World Border and Archu Statue Railway Path. Here's another section of Dory, and if you thought that was enough, oh boy, it just keeps going. Here we've got some pixel art from Undertale. One of the very first builds that popped up. Very creative. I know we had to get pixel art at some point, at some point. Here we've got a build made by Burnsy himself. After the Donkey Dupe 2.0, we finally decided to put our donkeys into a donkey retirement home. As you can see, we've got the donkeys that we used in the very donkey dupe. These donkeys have had the torture of seeing themselves duped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times for our own items today. They served us very well. Here is the Point Dory Cemetery, dead ahead. See what they did there, dead ahead? It is a build made by Matt VTD. Oh, and by the way, this is the same style as the as one of the entrances to Dory made by Scribble. <laughs> Very creative. This is a build made by Matt VTD. And <laughs> wow, look at this. With the angel statues and the in the detail. It's so awesome. We've got some amazing builders here of Dory. Many times did people die at Point Dory for whatever reasons. I myself died a few times. I remember when Elytra was re-enabled, I ran right into a wall and ended up ki killing myself. I'm going to start reading some of these signs because they're very well made. As you can see, this is a number one. Smitty Worm and Men Jager... Smitty, Wor Smitty Worm and Jager Men Jensen. He was number one. Point Nemo. Matt VT's house version one. Donkeys. All of them. Here lies Squidward. Silent Pedro. And it just keeps going. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Here lies Zombie Bob. Just kidding, he's behind you. This grave is as empty as your heart. Ouch, that one went deep. Got some more over here. It's not the dates on the ends that matter so much as the dash in between that represents life that we lived. And a few others. I just cannot believe my eyes when I see this. It's just, it's builds like these. Completely unnecessary, but... It, it represents the whole idea that we had going for Point Dory. Build what you want where you want it. And at some point, Matt VTD was like, I want to make a cemetery. Cemetery created by Matt VTD. Tombstone signs created by Point Dory's residents. I think I'm going to leave one here. R.I.P. Jolk. Died at the 24 million stash. R.I.P. Now let's move on to the next build. This one right here. This was a build that was in construction, and I really love the idea. It was one of the last builds that popped up before we decided that Dory was finished, and that I could tour it. It was a build that was being made by Terminator, and by the way, I just want to say, I love how this was constructed. It was originally just some weird generation, but he turned it into sort of this stone stance that's going to hold up, well, that was going to hold up a church up here before it was incompleted. Church of Dory wasn't finished due to mass evacuation. I still wanted to give it some screen time because it was truly going to be an amazing build knowing Terminator. I just want to give some attention to the views. When I circle around and I really start to comprehend what's here, I really don't think about it much. Because I've been here for every single day. But back in the day, if I knew I was going to be at a base like this, I wouldn't believe myself. A base like this is something you come across every great once in a while. I've always been a personal builder myself. I've loved building in the past. I have quite a few builds, but I've never had a build team of 30 people 
who are all motivated and dedicated to make something great. It's finally happened, and I'm not disappointed by the results. Well, enough blabbering. Here's a build that was in construction. It was going to be another massive build, as you can see. It's too bad that it was limited by time. It was looking great so far. Over here was a massive, and I mean massive, lake. As you can see, it goes all the way down to freaking bedrock. Covered in, in obsidian walls. If I'm correct, there was going to be a little bit of a ocean temple monument down here. That was before we had to leave early. I remember being here the day this was all mined out. The builder of this, the Beast and Sound, took advantage of a TNT duplication glitch that allows you to send a flying machine back and forth infinitely and drop TNT. I've got a recording of it that I can show you guys right now what it was like. It just drops TNT infinitely and infinitely and creates so many ghost blocks. It was crazy. This is like making the water cube with spawn, but just here at Point Dory. And not only that, I can imagine the time it took to place all the blocks in the walls. <laughs> Jesus, just another wonderful addition to Point Dory. Now this right here is the Point Dory Railway Station. Well, not station, but railway. It goes all the way to the world border, if I'm correct, or at least most of the way. And after a good while, it ends up taking you to a cross path. I won't go down it right now as it doesn't lead to anywhere necessarily exciting, but it goes in this direction and leads all the way to Dory. Now we've got only a few more things to check out. There's only one direction we haven't gone in on the Hall of Heroes. It is this direction. Believe it or not, there are a few more builds I still haven't shown you. Even though this video is extremely, extremely long. If we head over this way, I forget who made this build, but it was a very tiny and simple build. But very elegant at the same time. As you can see, it's just this nice little, this nice little pattern. I think it's best viewed in, in a map. Next to Burnsy's build, something I forgot to point out was this Lake of Sugarcane. This popped up right along with his build. He said that he's always wanted to make a Lake of Sugarcane. And originally here, there was a little bit of a lake, but as you can see, he turned it into this Sugarcane Lake that goes all the way around Dory. Well, not all the way. It goes, it goes a quarter of the way around Dory. And that turned out really well, and the lighting really makes it pop as well. Good job on him. If we head to this side, then head up a bit of the mountain. There are a few woods that I completely forgot about till now. Like this massive enchanting table. Actually, I haven't actually been in here myself. This is the first time I've seen this build. Well, the inside of it at least. And this place is stylish. Wow. Again, when I talk about the variety of builds, this is a prime example. There's no point, no rhyme, no reason. Someone just made it because they woke up one day and, and said, I want to make that. A little bit of an outpost and storage room. By the way, I don't know who. I don't know who built this right here. Cre turned all the stone into this brown or black hardened clay. But it actually looks really well. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious what it would have looked like all the way around. Here we've got some of the more untouched areas of Dory. I think if we had stayed there longer, this place would have become populated. I kind of wanted to build a little medieval town while I was here. I was planning that. And I was going to be in the making. I have a little bit of a layout in Creative World, but of course we ran out of time due to the, due to the coordinates being somewhat leaked. Now I won't go into much detail as to how the coordinates were leaked, but it's important to the history of Dory. So after some time, a player that I will not mention had another player log onto his account and get access to Dory. And said player is a well-known player for griefing and destroying things and 
had to consider the coordinates being leaked to somebody else, and we couldn't take the risk. That was really the downfall of Dory. Dory begun as Nemo fell, but it ended the same way as many other bases do. Some player going outside of the group and betraying them. But it is very important for the history of this base, as it is the reason why we had to evacuate and leave this place behind. Dory although had a very bright history to be fairly honest. Although it started with the depressions of Nemo being griefed, it really ended up turning out great because we immediately got access after a few hours of testing and trying things out, we got access to the Donkey Dupe 2.0. We instantly had a dupe stash right here. As you can see, it's all gone. We had to get it transferred. But we had a dupe stash right at this very location. We had access to so many items. It was the reason why Dory turned out the way it did. For Dory alone, we ended up going through a whole dub, a whole double chest of grass just to create the entire base. And not only that, we slowly ran out of stone. We slowly ran out of wood. We ran out of everything. But in the end, it was worth it. As we were able to make a base that exceeded any expectations we had before. But for many hours here, a player by the name of Damon helped us out so much with duplicating so many items. Although I was the first one to successfully dupe an item consistently, Damon was honestly the one who deserves all of the credit. Without him, I don't think anyone else would have been able to do it. Day in and day out, he would get on the server and dupe items we may need, and he deserves a lot of recognition for it. He's one of the most trusted players we have at Dory, and he deserves a lot of respect as a player. He's willing to go through a lot just for a few people, and one of the most friendly people I've ever met as well. I don't think there's a bad bone in his heart. Now before I hit the next build, I want to give a little bit more of a the history behind Dory. So when Point Nemo got destroyed, we all had to regather our stuff. Figure out what was going on, it was sort of crazy for us. We didn't know what was going to happen next. But luckily, a player named by Willy Roof had found an awesome biome. This savanna biome with this huge mountain. And instantly, many of us agreed to come to this exact place and start building. And some of us were very... We didn't really know what to expect, but it turned out so well. And we just went from there making pathways and crossways all the way around Dory. As inaccessible as this huge mountain may be, we've made every place so easy to visit. It's almost as if you can wander off in any direction and find a build. You can sort of explore it at your own pace, see everything one by one. And that's what it'll personally be to me. One of the best bases on 2B2T. Here's another build that was in construction. Doesn't look complete. I just want to give some screen time to these so I don't want so they don't get forgotten. Down here is a block museum that was in construction, which unfortunately never got finished. It sounded like a very, very neat concept. It would have every single block in it. Every single block in a little bit of a display. It would have been huge, but it would have been really cool. Here in this flat plane was another massively planned design. It was going to be a huge build, sort of like Octopia's Drain. It's going to be a massive build where we all dedicated our time into one simple design rather than a bunch of small designs that we've created. And unfortunately, we didn't have enough time and it was an extremely ambitious idea that would take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of materials, as well as ow, hundreds of hours of time to finish. But it was a neat concept that I'd definitely like to come back to one day. Now we're approaching the end of the tour, and I just want to take a look at everything before I end it all. Because I truly haven't shown everything. You really have to check this place out for yourself to really experience it. Because even at night, me showing you these shaders, with everything as it is, it will never be enough to really explain what this base is like. I would have to make this video at least three hours just to really convey all of the ideas and everything that went into these builds. And I'm really sad that I can't do that, but there's just so much to show off. Even the, even the inside of these houses, I haven't had time to go around. As much as I would love to, I really have to keep moving on. I would love to go deeper, and maybe one day I will. Maybe I'll make a video of the entire history of the Nether Highway group. Oh, yeah, yo, what's up, Matt? How's it going? Maybe one day I'll create a video just explaining everything about this base. From its beginning to its ends, and even before we founded the base. What's going on, my dude? 
From Bernsey digging the highway to everything else that's been going on, to the creation of Scribble Fox's build, to the creation of the Hall of Heroes, to the creation of even these signs. I'll explain everything that went on in the Discord, every single threat that was posed to us, every little bit of drama, every great thing we had bestowed upon us. And before I end the tour, I want to list out everyone's names, everyone's names that had a part in this base, and give my own personal thanks. My thanks go to Burnsy, 24 Terminator 80, Ion, Ahsoka, DRYG, Hammernaut, Matt VTD, Jolk, Iceberg86, Nazis YouTube, IRQL, SKA2, Scribblefox, Toy Soldier, Twinkle Tard, Willy Roof, Star928, Damon, The Beast and Sound, Admirac, Diane, Rasky, Pufferflups, CB the Beast, Clam, Doc Smurf, and Dick. Thank you all so much for inviting me to this base. Take, it took me too long to list out everything that they've contributed to this base. Everything that they've done. All I can say is that they deserve credit for being amazing, trustworthy builders. They should deserve credit for being able to stick through an entire journey, walking 3.7 million blocks in the nether through a single tunnel. They deserve credit for being trustworthy. Credit for being able to build, for being a part of this entire place. They are all amazing players and deserve much recognition. All of their heads have a place in the Hall of Heroes for a reason. They all participated here. All added their own history. All did their own things, their own personality. It was all something I never want to forget. And no matter what happens, no matter when this place gets griefed, its coordinates get leaked, no matter if the group breaks up for whatever reason, no matter what happens, None of us will forget our time here. Even 10 years from now, we will never forget what we did here, all the seconds we spent together, everything we managed to create as a group. Everything you saw before you, everything created, was Point Dory. It was the Nether Highway Group's official base, constructed in two and a half months by 30 people. And that right there was the full tour and the history of Point Dory.